Hey everybody, it's Andrew here of Vespa Portland. Tonight we're going to be walking through the features and functions of the Piaggio Liberty 150. So if you didn't already know, Piaggio is the parent company of Vespa. Their lineup of scooters is geared more toward utilitarian use at a lower price point than their Vespa cousins. The Liberty is a fuel-injected larger wheel, big wheel, high wheel, whatever you want to call it, scooter that is excellent for commuting in any kind of just urban scooting use. Its price point is right in line and in some cases well below that of its competitors. And aesthetically, I know I'm a bit biased here, but I just prefer the slim and trim kind of sporty look that the Liberty has. Other bikes in this price range, such as the Honda PCX, there's just a lot of bulbous plastics that I'm not personally a fan of. And if that's you as well, then maybe the Liberty is what you want to take a look at. It's just slim, trim, and sporty, and it just doesn't feel like a lot of extra plastic for no real good reason. It's a really comfortable scooter to ride. It's got plenty of room for your feet, a nice, comfortable riding position, and a seat that actually lets you sit back a little bit if you are a taller rider. The Liberty is also really easy to handle. It's pretty lightweight at 255 pounds. It's 24 pounds lighter than the Vespa Primavera or Sprint, and it's 33 pounds lighter than the Honda PCX. Piaggio is able to save some weight by going with a tubular frame that has plastic paneling around it. Whereas on, say, the Vespa, for instance, you have a, a full metal unibody frame, which is going to add a little bit of extra weight, of course. So what's that mean for you, the weight difference? It means greater ease of handling. If you're a lighter weight rider, maybe you're a smaller person in general, there's not as much bike to kind of fight against. You're going to get a little bit increased gas mileage, but also that reduction in weight is going to uh, allow the engine, which we'll talk about in a bit, to be a little more responsive to your throttle. This bike really gets up and goes off the line, which is one of my favorite things about it. The engine that is on the Piaggio Liberty 150 is the same as is found on the Vespa Sprint and Vespa Primavera 150, meaning you can get up to traffic speed, no problem from a, a dead stop. And you can also take short freeway trips on this bike if you would like. Top speed on the Liberty 150, just like the Primavera and Sprint, is going to be 68 miles an hour. Now, on the speedometer, it's going to show that you're going 73. But just know that pretty much every scooter and motorcycle is a little bit optimistic, and you're typically going about 5 miles an hour slower than it says. The real nice thing about this bike, as it relates to the reduced weight of 24 pounds, is that, at least to me and to some other people who have ridden it and said the same, once this scooter is broken in around the 620-something mile mark, it feels faster than the Primavera and the Sprint, just because there's that 24-pound difference, and it's the same amount of uh, power pushing you forward. All right, so next up, we're gonna run through all the functions and features of the Liberty 150, starting with the key and then working our way up to the handlebars and back toward the end of the bike. So the first thing I wanna show you is the center stand. So this scooter is obviously sitting on the center stand, as you can see, it's really secure. Shaking it around, it's not going anywhere. To get the scooter off the center stand, you simply wanna hold on to a grip and to something static in the back, like the, the rack back here, and then just push forward. And you can see that the center stand pops off. To get back on the center stand, you just want to have the seat flat because you're dealing with a two-part stand. If you, if you lean it too far forward, you're going to make the stand do this. If you lean too far away, you're doing that. You want to have the seat flat, which ensures that both parts of the stand are going to both contact the ground. Once it's there, you want to open up your right hip, put your heel on the center stand, and then just push and it goes right back up on the stand like that. All right, so let's start out the handlebars. You can see in the lower right part of your screen that your ignition is in view. You have four different ignition positions. You have a lock, a close, an off, and an on. And the off and on do not say off and on. It's just a loop that has an X through it or a loop that doesn't have an X through it. When you're in public parking, you're always going to want to turn your handlebars all the way to the left and then turn the key all the way to the left and that puts you in the lock position. Next up is going to be the close position. Now I'm taking, I'm dropping the key out of the bike and what the close position is going to do, let me back the camera up a touch, is allow you to move the handlebars but it won't let you into any of the storage compartments. What is that for? Well, in other countries where there are way more scooters and motorcycles, sometimes you might find yourself in a parking place on the street where there's just so many bikes that you have to move some other ones to get to yours. So that allows you or someone else to move your bike out of the way or you to move theirs without you know, getting into your storage compartments and taking your stuff just so they can get access to their bike and get on with their day. We don't really have that problem in the US. We probably will never have that problem in the US, but the close function exists because this bike goes all over the world. 
in the close position and in the lock position, you're able to put this key into the ignition and remove it. Once you click to the right into the off or the on position, you cannot pull the key out. Uh, it is held in there. Before we move on from the key, it is important to tell you that this particular key right here, the brown master key, is the one that should be put somewhere safe in your house. Don't use this one to ride around. Use this one for your daily rides. You can make more copies of this black key off of the master, but uh, it's chipped and you don't want to lose this thing because every time you put the key into the ignition, the bike is talking to the key to see if it's the code that it accepts and if it's going to allow this scooter to start. That's another security feature, that immobilizer, which keeps someone from stuffing a screwdriver in there and just turning the bike on. All right, next up, we're gonna go over the handlebar controls, left and right. So to, before we get that going, I'm just gonna turn the key to the on position so everything fires up. Every time you, the scooter is on, the headlight is going to be illuminated. That's a US law, you have to have a light on all the time. But the scooter also comes with, of course, a high beam, which you can permanently turn on there. Or if you just wanna flash it at somebody, press the bottom there and, and you can flash the high beam for passing or whatever. The next button down is the turn signals. The turn signals go right or left. And to cancel them, you have to press in on the button. Uh, they are not self-canceling. You need to do that yourself. So you can see that the turn signals make what sort of looks like a hazard light pop on. It's right or left. It's just that's your indicator that your turn signals are on. And so remember to press to cancel and that will go off. Down below that, you have a horn right here. Let's hit it. And then next to that, you have the electronic seat storage actuator. You press this button and it's going to pop the seat so you can get into the storage compartment below. Moving to the controls on the right side. The first thing you're gonna notice up here is the front wheel ABS, uh, telling you that you have an anti-lock braking system on the front wheel. Down below that, you've got this red button. This is the kill switch, this is the off position, and this is the run position. If you ever have trouble getting your scooter to start, you don't know why it's not starting, make sure that this switch is not to the left. You want it to the side with uh, the open loop with no X to make sure that it runs. It's another US law where you have to be able to disable the engine without taking your hands off of the handlebars. So you can turn the scooter off with that if you would like, but you can see that the, uh, the screen is still illuminated, so you're obviously still pulling battery power. So you definitely would wanna turn the key to the off position as well. Don't just hit that red button and walk away. You will come back to a dead battery. Down below the kill switch is the mode button. Pressing on the mode button is going to transfer you between Total miles, trip odometer A and trip odometer B. If you want to clear out the trip odometer at the gas station or something, see what kind of mileage you've been getting on the last tank, you can just press and hold on the mode button and it will clear out to zero. If you want to change the time, the scooter's not smart enough to understand daylight saving time. So you go to total miles and then you press and hold on the mode button. And what that's gonna do is make it all flash. You would do short presses to advance the hour. I'm gonna leave it as it is and then it'll take you to minutes. Again, short presses to advance, long press to hold, just like any old alarm clock. Also, you have the gas gauge on there on this left side. That is flashing to let you know that the anti-lock brake system is enabled. Once you go about three miles an hour, that light is going to extinguish, and then when you stop again at a stop light or a you know, stop sign or whatever, it's gonna flash again until you again go past three miles an hour and, and continue with your speed. If that ever goes fully solid on you, however, you're definitely gonna to wanna to call your local service center to see what is going on. Down below that, you got oil pressure light, fuel light would be down here, and the high beam light would be above the oil pressure light. Down below the kill switch and to the right of the mode button is the electronic start. Starting your scooter, the process is as follows. Make sure your key is in the on position, and you'll know that because it is lit up. Uh, make sure the kill switch is to the run position, and then grab a brake on either side and hold that as you press the electric start, and the scooter will fire right up. So on this one, I'll grab the front brake and hit the button. To kill the engine, kill switch. And then, of course, turn the key. You have a locking glove box available to you on the Piaggio Liberty. To access it, you're going to need to turn the key to the off or the on position and press in on the ignition. And that will pop the glove box open like so. 
Next up, I'm gonna show you the bag hook. So right here, there's a hook that folds out. Uh, don't put anything too crazy heavy on this. The weight limit on this bag hook is 3.3 pounds, as the owner's manual says. So, you know, some to-go food or something like that, but I wouldn't hang anything incredibly heavy off of this. And it goes right there, and when you don't wanna use it, it folds right back up. Next up is your under seat storage. So the same deal, when the key is in the off or the on position, you're able to press the under seat storage button right here, the electronic actuator, and open this thing right up. I'm gonna move this out of the way and open up the under seat storage so you can take a look in there. Back here you have the battery. Uh, it's underneath this cover. Inside of here you have some room for various items. I wouldn't put anything perishable in there or susceptible to heat like ice cream. Uh, you wouldn't wanna do that because the engine is below it and heat is going to rise out of there. In the front, you've got the gas. You're gonna to wanna to use 91 or 92 octane premium, whatever that is in your area. And as we move up the seat here, if you're in the Portland area at least, uh, we put a service sticker on our scooters to let you know when the next mileage interval is to bring it in for a service and keep your bike running tip top. And then above that, you have a tool kit, which a lot of people don't even realize they have. That's going to have a shock adjuster, spark plug puller, and a couple screwdrivers. I think Phillips head, flathead, and Torx drivers to get these uh, Torx fasteners, if you ever need to take them out, out of the scooter. So as you can see, the No Pets label is still in all the under seat storage uh, compartments of the Vespa and the Piaggio. Don't put your pets in here. And despite there not probably being enough room for a full face helmet or even an open face, if you have a head that's larger than maybe extra small, uh, you do have these posts right here. So there's a post there and a post in the back and you can hang the metal loop of your helmet on those posts and your helmet will occupy this space. And when the seat closes, your helmet is locked in and nobody can take it. If you have a passenger on the Liberty, no problem. The, the scooter will hold up to 683 pounds. All you gotta do is pop the passenger foot pegs out and your passenger's feet can rest comfortably on these while yours are up in the foot well area. You're nowhere near each other. You're not you know, colliding like that and it gives a comfortable and safe ride for both of you. When you don't wanna use them, put them back up. So moving down to the left side of the bike, you can see the rear shock right here and there are a bunch of ridges on it. What that's gonna do is allow you to uh, adjust the load of the shock. So there's a shock adjuster tool in the toolkit underneath the seat. And what you're gonna do there is just pop it on here and then just pull this way, pull this way. You're gonna encounter a little bit of resistance, but as you run through these ridges, the shock will stiffen up. That's a great option for heavier riders. You're over 200 pounds. You probably shouldn't be riding on the lowest setting. The wheels on the Piaggio Liberty are 14 inch in the back and 16 inch in the front. That larger wheel is going to make it feel a little more comfortable on streets that have a lot of bumps and potholes and ruts and things like that. So the Piaggio Liberty is 27 inches wide from lever to lever. The mirrors will you know, vary depending on where you put them. Obviously they're gonna add another probably six inches, just kind of guesstimating it. And then the scooter is six and a half feet long from the front of the tire to the tip of the rear fender. The weight, as I said, is 255 pounds, and most of that weight is going to be down below the seat in the engine and rear wheel assembly. That makes it real nimble. You can kind of shift your hips and kind of go into the next lane, that sort of thing. Makes it real easy to maneuver, real easy to handle at high speeds, at low speeds, and at no speed, especially if you're a smaller rider who uh, doesn't have a lot of muscle mass. Accessory-wise, you're a little bit limited on the Liberty, but that makes sense because it's a commuter scooter, kind of a utilitarian bike. You can add a windscreen onto the Liberty and you can add a top case back here onto the included flat rack. Adding a top case onto the Liberty is pretty easy. You gotta pop off this plastic piece right here to expose the, uh, the mounting area. It's nice that you have the included flat rack. You just need the top case and the mounting bracket to complete that. And you ramp up your storage area quite a bit. Down here at the bottom of the leg shield, you have your VIN plate facing you as you ride. The very bottom number from the black all the way through the chrome is the VIN of this particular scooter. Up here in the top corner, you have the date 721. This scooter was built in July of 2021. On the top here, you have 683 pounds, which is the gross vehicle weight rating. That's how much uh, load the bike can carry. Uh, try not to exceed that or even really get close, ideally. Then below that, you've got your front and rear tire suggested air pressure from the manufacturer. You should always go by this, not by what's written on the tire. The front PSI on the Liberty is 29 and the back is 40.6. Ideally, you're checking your tire pressure every month. Uh, in the colder weather, you're gonna lose tire pressure faster. So in the winter months, obviously, if you're still riding, make sure your tires are aired up properly. 
Doing that is gonna make your tires last longer. It's going to give you the best amount of friction with the road and it's just the safest thing you can do. Airing up your tires is super easy as well. You're just gonna to wanna to spin the tire until you get down to the valve stem. It's right here. Pop the valve stem cap off and you'll see that it's just a standard Schrader valve as you would have on any car or like a beach cruiser, BMX bike, etc. So you can use any bicycle pump to fill this thing up or air compressor at your house or at a gas station, whatever. Back on the right side of the bike, if you want to check your oil level, which you should probably do at least every month or so, you can come back down right here and the dipstick is sticking out right here. Just twist it back, wipe it off, pop it back in, twist it all the way back in, twist it back out, and then see where it is on the level. The owner's manual will show you what it should look like. Take a look there. Just be careful not to burn your hand if you just stopped riding on the, uh, ex the exhaust right here. That's going to be super hot. That's what this heat shield is for. So. Keep your hands away from the metal when you do that. And also make sure that your bike is on steady level ground up on the center stand so that you're getting the most accurate reading. And of course, if you're spending money on a vehicle like this, you're going to want to maintain it. The Piaggio Liberty comes with a two year unlimited mile warranty against manufacturer defects. A lot of people confuse that with, that means my services are always free. They are not. It is if something is wrong with your bike like it's making a noise or a light stops working or one of these lights on the dashboard stays on. That diagnostic work to determine the problem and, and most likely the fix is covered under your warranty, assuming you didn't do something to it. If you crash the thing, sorry, that's not in warranty. Um, but also you've got various services to keep up with, just like with your car. What Your car needs oil changes, etc. This thing needs fluid changes as well. The first service on the Piaggio Liberty is at 625 miles. At that point, you're gonna to wanna to bring that in and we're gonna get all the break-in fluids out of it, make sure everything's running tip top. I believe it also needs a valve adjustment on that service. The next service after that, after 625 miles, is going to be every 3,000 is the interval. At the 3,000 mile mark, it's a fluid change for the most part. And then at um, the 6,000 mile mark is time for what's called a major service. Now what that is, is the drive belt in the scooter is a hard rubber and uh, that's going to need to be replaced because it, it wears out after a while. It's a wearable item. You have to change out the rollers back there as well. And then of course all the same fluid changes and whatnot. So every 6,000 miles plan on a major service, every 3,000 miles plan on a routine service after you bring it in after your first 625 miles. That break-in service is key to getting all that old fluid out of there. And uh, your bike's going to feel really good after that service. It takes about 600 miles for the engine to break in and then it just feels like it's just a touch faster. It's like a well-worn in baseball glove. If you're in the Portland area, you can just look at the sticker underneath the seat, 503-222-3779, uh, and then press two, that'll get you to the service department. We have a full service department here with really qualified technicians and the service manager that can keep your bike running well. You just gotta get on the schedule. And of course, it's worth saying that in the, the, the riding months, spring, summer, and fall, if it's sunny out, everybody else has the same idea to go ride too. So, don't, don't wait until the last second, you know, get, get on the phone and, and get uh, an appointment scheduled for your service. In the winter time, you can pretty much walk in any shop in the country and uh, find time probably same day, but not so much in the summer. Expect a week, two week wait, uh, typically. All right, so lastly, let's just talk about uh, pricing and colors. So as of the time of this filming, which is January, 2022, the Piaggio Liberty 150 comes in two colors in this standard configuration. You're going to get the blue color that you see here, and there's also a gloss white color. You can see that there's a lot of chrome accents on this bike here, down here, the mirrors, etc. All of the standard models, the white and the blue, will have these chrome accents. For $100 extra, you can jump to the Liberty Sport, which will have these all blacked out. So you'd have black mirrors, you'd have a, a black on, on this kind of wing piece right here, you'd have black back here on the taillights. And everything chrome that you're seeing is, is blacked out except for the, uh, the brake levers. Other than that, the Liberty Sport is the exact same scooter from an ergonomic standpoint and internal standpoint. Engine's the same, everything's the same. It's just that cosmetic change from the chrome accents to the black accents to make it look a little sportier. The Liberty Sport 150, that one is available in gloss white, gloss gray, and matte black again as of the time of filming this video. For the most part, because as I said, the Piaggio line is geared more toward commuters and everyday riders like that, and it's a little more utilitarian, not much of a showboat, they tend to go subtle with the color. They did red one time, it was a matte red, they did a matte titanium, but mostly blues, grays, blacks, whites is pretty much what you're gonna expect on 
everything in the Piaggio lineup. They just uh, kind of walk that more kind of conservative line of, of color options. The MSRP of the standard Liberty, as you see here, is $2,999. Of course, that's going to exclude freight, setup, local taxes, DMV fees, whatever, which ranges by county, state, and dealer to dealer. The Liberty Sport 150 MSRP is $3,099. That is pretty low for an MSRP compared to some of its competitors. And I really only think of the Honda PCX as like a legitimate competitor to the, the Piaggio Liberty. Uh, and the Honda PCX, I believe, is $700 more than the standard one here. So a lot of bang for the buck coming out of the Liberty. Super reliable scooter, ABS brakes, fuel injected, stylish, two-year unlimited mile warranty, etc. for 700 bucks less, um, and it's just cleaner looking in my opinion. Kind of a no-brainer. You get a lot for your dollar with the Piaggio Liberty. So there you have it. The Piaggio Liberty is a fantastic scooter. If it's your first one or you're adding it to a collection or whatever, this bike is going to get it done for you. A few years back, some friends and I took these on a ride through Baja, California, Mexico, and this bike performed flawlessly. It kept up with GTSs, with Vespa 150s of different years, etc. Kept up on the freeway, kept up on the highways, kept up on service streets, no problem. It was nimble on the streets. We were on a lot of dirt roads, some of which were better suited for uh, dirt bikes. And it just, it just kept going. We crossed some sketchy bodies of water, and the clips you're seeing now are from that trip. And there's a lot of marketing out there, specifically the Honda ADV, which is marketed as an adventure scooter, which is, I just kind of laugh when I look at that, because like, we've taken this scooter, which looks sleek and sporty and street stylish, on some roads that we, where we were not babying this bike, and it was fine. Like, don't let the marketing get to you. You can take any scooter off-road. It's not really what they're meant for, but if you have to do it, it'll do it. So if you're looking to get one of these and you're in the Portland area, give us a call or text or hit up the contact site on our website. There's a million ways to get a hold of us. 503-222-3779 is the phone number. With global supply chain issues still being what they are in January of 2022, I would say if you're interested, it's time to get on the phone with us or your local dealer and put a deposit down and make sure that you secure the next one that's coming. Because honestly, when, when these leave the floor, we don't know when they're getting replaced. It could be two months, three months, one month, tomorrow, we don't know. So you don't want to be waiting and then have someone else snap it up because they called three months before you and now you got to wait further into the year. Um, common problem in, in recent, uh, recent years with everything going on. That about does it for the Piaggio Liberty 150. If you think I missed anything or there's any more questions you have, uh, leave them in the comments below. We'll write back to you. So thanks a lot for watching. This is Andrew here at Vespa Portland, and we will see you in the next video. I'm at the Hotel over there.